Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about the Celestron Stereo Binocular Viewers. This old guy told me he was going blind and he had to give up astronomy. And so he gave me these bino viewers. And he also gave me a pair of 8 to 24 millimeter Mead zoom eyepieces to use with the bino viewers. And can you believe that this is the first zoom eyepiece I've ever owned in all these years of stargazing? The reason is that when I was young, everyone said, don't get zoom eyepieces because they're cheap and inferior. And they probably were right back then, but these eyepieces were actually not bad at all. And they worked well with the Celestron Bino Viewer much better than the only other pair of matching eyepieces that I own, which is the Explore Scientific 24 millimeter, because those eyepieces have a fat barrel. Anyway, let me tell you about the Celestron Stereo Binocular Viewer. I don't know how old these bino viewers are. They are in good shape, but Celestron still makes these and they currently go for 259 US dollars. They come in this nice metal, padded case. They weigh about one pound, two ounces, or 500 grams, <clears throat> which is less than other bino viewers I tested. But of course, you'll need to put two matching eyepieces on them, and that will add to the weight. Still, they're fairly light. These bino viewers have rubberized coating on the outside, so they're easy to grasp even when it's cold outside. They use BAK4 prisms for increased light transmission, and there's no vignetting, and the glass is fully multi-coated. And you can focus each eyepiece individually and use the diopter to adjust for any differences in your vision in each eye. They take one and a quarter inch eyepieces, and they can also accept filters. And they can be used on Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes and Maxutov Cassegrain telescopes and most refractors. And maybe your reflector, but you might not be able to reach focus on a Newtonian reflector with the bino viewer. It's too cloudy to view tonight, but I just took out my Dobsonian during the day to see if I could get the bino viewer to come to focus on my reflector and I'm pointed to something about two miles away and I can't focus. Um, there's not much back focus on my Dobsonian which is a 10 inch and I can focus if I just put an eyepiece in here so it's just that these bino viewers don't work with my reflector. So if you want to use them on your reflector before you buy them see how much back focus is needed but they're really intended for catadoptric telescopes, so they don't work on my reflector. So they're best suited for catadioptric telescopes, but can be used on some refractors and reflectors. I tested this pair on a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with this pair of Mead 8 to 24 zoom eyepieces, and they worked great, and they gave me very nice views of the moon. It's not a very nice evening for stargazing. There are a lot of clouds and the moon is nearly full. I think it's full in three days, but I wanted to try out these Celestron Bino viewers. I am able to make one image circle. I'm using some Mead zoom eyepieces. These are two eight to 24 millimeter zoom eyepieces but about the only thing I could look at is the moon. So let's look at the moon. <laughs> And 
on another night I tried them out on some star clusters I never could get up early enough to look at a planet with these but the things that I did look at were sharp and clear and very pleasing to look at with both my eyes and the mead eyepieces worked well with these bino viewers they were better than I thought they would be I also tried to use the Explore Scientific but I couldn't get the uh, inner pupillary distance close enough for my eyes because of the wider barrel than the mead eyepieces. The Explore Scientific eyepieces just didn't work out. So you'll need to find two matching eyepieces for these bino viewers or any bino viewer that you intend to use. So make sure you get a pair that have a barrel that isn't too thick to interfere with bringing the binoculars close enough together to make one image circle. These Celestron bino viewers have a pretty good range for the inner pupillary distance which is not marked on here but uh, according to the website the inner pupillary distance goes from 54 to 75 millimeters which is a huge range and I was able to get them close enough together to work for my eyes, which I think have a 58 millimeter inner pupillary distance. So overall, I thought these were pretty good binocular viewers, especially considering the price of $259, which is about half of the cost of the Explore Scientific bino viewers. I thought these Celestron bino viewers had a clear image and it was pleasing to use both eyes making it seem like you were out in space. The only downside is to be careful what matching eyepieces you select because if they're too wide they may bump into each other or maybe it's not a problem for you if you have really wide apart eyes but be sure you can make one image circle and you might not be able to use them on a reflector. Other than that I give them a positive rating they aren't going to compare to Dinkmeyer's, but they're nice and compact and reasonably priced. So yes, I recommend these Celestron Bino viewers, especially if you intend to use them on a catadioptric telescope. So that's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off. <laughs>